just go on immediately. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome to Red Puts Art in Your Face. Uh, hopefully we don't have the same problems we did last time. I'm really hoping things go much smoother. Uh, last time, I know the, uh, the stream cut out quite a bit, so I'm hoping that that doesn't happen this time. Uh, okay. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and pick up on one of my, uh, earlier projects. Alright, uh, here we go. Um, and Michaela is here today, but she, she went to go put some clothes on because she had not gotten dressed yet. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not like we were going anywhere today, but yeah, she wanted to make sure she had some clothes on, I guess. Yep. Alright, so, here you go. Um, we're doing some highlighting on one of my Transformer uh, OCs. Uh, his name is Spider. He turns into a spider. Um, and he also turns into a uh, Kosegneg, I think, Agara? Yeah. Uh, it's like the second or third fastest car in the world. Uh, well, because uh, he's supposed to be a teammate of Red Strike, who turns into a Hennessy Venom, which is the fastest car on Earth. So I was going for a thing for the top three fastest, fastest cars. Yep. Never thought I would actually do research on cars until I got into Transformers. I mean, I already liked cars. I mean, I watched Top Gear, like, all the time. And it's, like, partly because it's just, like, three older men pretending they're still, like, little boys, which is hilarious to me. And also, um, just, they feature a lot of cars, and, and they're, like, really cool cars, okay? So I like cars. I do. I like, I, I have always kind of, like, really like cars. I think it's because, um, when I was, uh, when I was little, um, my, like, best friend and neighbor, whose name was the same name as mine before I changed my name, um, well, I haven't changed it legally. I should really, like, get on that or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, so, uh, we had the same name and that's actually how we started to become friends was because we had the same name and her dad had this like really cool car, but it was kind of like a uh, screaming metal death trap. It was almost exactly like that episode of, uh, the fairly odd parents where, uh, Timmy's dad gets that racer, the racer Z. <laughs> it was, it was like that. Cause there were no seat belts at all, except for in the front seat. <laughs> Which I never sat in. I don't even think there were seatbelts in the front seat. God, that thing really was a screaming metal death trap. Anyway, but it was a really cool car. Um, and it, it started my, like, fascination with, like, really fast red cars. <laughs> and, like, just fast cars in particular. And just cars. I really like cars. Cars are cool. Um, like, I've always really, I've always really, really liked uh, Mustangs. Uh, like, I was dating this guy for a while, and one of the major things I really liked about him was he had a Mustang, uh, and it was, like, a really nice model, but the color wasn't great, because it was, like, bright-ass yellow, and I was like, oh, I like everything about this car except for the color. <laughs> why is it yellow? <laughs> like, I know everyone has their own favorite color and shit, but why? Why yellow on a Mustang? <laughs> anyway, yeah, so... It was one of the main reasons why I continued to date him was because he had this, like, really awesome car. Mustangs are cool. I like Mustangs. What Hi. are we coloring today? Okay, so we are coloring... Well, right now we're doing the highlights for Spider. My... Yes, my Transformers OC. Uh, yeah. He's so pretty. Um, he is. Yep. So we're going in, and we're coloring him. Yay. Hi, Phoenix! Hi, Phoenix! That was loud. Sorry. Hi, Phoenix! Um, I'm hoping... I have to be loud, otherwise yeah. I won't be heard. Yes, please be <laughs> loud. Um... Okay! <laughs> I, know, I know you were, like, trying to be loud on that one, but actually you weren't. I know. <laughs> um, I started, I started the stream a little bit later today because I'm hoping that Rob comes home before we get too far into it, so that way if something goes wrong, he can help me. Um, because I, I'm not familiar with the streaming stuff the way that he is. Uh, I mean, he's- Rob is very knowledgeable about this stuff. Yeah, and, and I'm, and, I'm not. And, and Red is, um, 
not. Yeah. <laughs> My knowledge pertains to art history and art itself, which is why I do the art for the channel. <laughs> Like and my knowledge lies more in music, so if yeah. we ever talk about if we ever have like a music focused show yeah. for this channel, then I'm probably going to be the expert on it. Yeah. Like, but uh yeah. yeah. When it comes to the streaming stuff, we're like, huh? Yeah. Like mine is mine is uh like in, like insider inform like uh background information for, for Mass Effect and Dragon Age mm -hmm. because I'm obsessed. Um, and a little bit Fable, too, like, uh, and I don't mean just Fable, too, I mean, like, um, because, like, if I, if I really like something, like, a TV show or a video game, and I get really obsessed with it, I will research everything about it, <laughs> uh, and I did that for years with Mass Effect and Dragon Age, which is why I know so much about them, and I've read all the extra material for the most part, I think I'm missing out on a couple of, like, comic books for Dragon Age. But, um, yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, like, I've read all the extra stuff for those games because I like them so much. Um, like, I, I, fan. I am, and I, like, habitually read the, uh, the wiki like con like all the time. <laughs> it's 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 not a one time thing. It happens a lot. <laughs> well, and to be fair, that is typically what hardcore fans usually do anyway, so I mean I just do research for like fun. Mm -hmm. It's like what happens when I get involved in any anything I really enjoy or I'm interested in. I research the crap out of it. <laughs> like for instance, I really, I actually really do like science. I just really just don't like math, which is why I'm not ever going into science. I mean, if I was, uh, I'd probably go into biology because I feel like there's less math involved with biology. <laughs> um, and I like biology. I like, uh, specifically, I like evolutionary biology and how it works and specifically how it works with procreation type, um, behaviors, otherwise known as sex. I like knowing how things procreate. Don't, don't ask me why. I mean, it's like the number one question I have because it's a very important, like, it's a very important question. How do you make babies? I want to know. Because that's how like- How are babies created in this world? Right? Because like, no, but okay, hear me out. It's the number one most important thing, because if you're an organic thing, your whole job is find a mate, procreate. Yeah, you have, if you talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, level one, sex, food, shelter. Yeah, in that order, specifically. <laughs> if you can't procreate, you're gonna be stuck all by your little lonesome. Yeah. So you better make sure that you find somebody to bang. So I'm like, it's step two, make sure you feed yourself so that way you and your lovely lady or lovely man, I don't know how this will work for that particular species, yeah. find enough sustenance to keep yourself alive so that you can bang like bunnies. And, and procreate. It all comes down to procreation because you're passing on your genes. Yep. Like, so it's a very important thing. And so like my mom like is just, why are you so obsessed with sex? I'm like, because it's an important part of life. Without sex, there's no babies. Like, in general! <laughs> and so, like, that, like if I was going to get into biology, I would study how things have sex. <laughs> well, I think that would just be a sexologist. Yes. <laughs> well, like, there's two different definitions of sexologist, because you have, like, sci you have, like, the ones that study the psychology of sex. And, like... Uh, sexual behaviors in, in humans, which I also find incredibly fascinating for God knows what reason. And and then you also have uh, the type of sexologists who study how things procreate and how they have sex. Like, okay, so here's some interesting things that I have discovered from my favorite book. <laughs> We're going to talk about sex this whole <laughs> episode. Enjoy, everybody. <laughs> It's not the kind of sex that you would be expecting, though. <laughs> okay, no, but, like, okay, so, 
No, but like some of the things I've, I've learned from one of my, from my favorite book right now uh-huh. is that, okay, so like the general thought process has been for, for many years that uh, females are chaste and males are uh, promiscuous. But I love Buddhistic. Buddhistic. <laughs> right? Such a sexy conversation. No, okay, so, but, no, but, like, okay, so this guy in the 19, I want to say the 1950s, did this study on fruit flies. And basically, the conclusion he came to was that males are promiscuous and females are uh, chaste because the males would have sex with females and then look for, for more females to mate with. But here's the thing. That's actually not true in the vast majority of species. It actually turns out that the females are promiscuous and the males are chaste. In fact, the, the specific type of fruit flies that this guy studied, if he had studied them for even just four days longer, he would have disproven his own theory. Because this specific species of fruit fly actually switched behavior after a certain point and the females are like, okay, I need more guys. <laughs> like... That's the whole reason why you have this, like, competition between... This is getting hot drop spins. <laughs> awesome. I'm so glad this is, a sex- this is a sexy conversation for you. I'm talking about fruit flies. Um, no, okay, but, like, so... And, and that's actually true for pretty much most species. In fact, every species that you think... Um, as monogamous, specifically birds. Let's take birds, for example. You know how, like, a lot of people say birds are monogamous? Like, specifically some subtypes of birds? Mm -hmm. All of those species of birds that everyone thought was monogamous, turns out, nope, the guys are raising somebody else's babies. Because the girls got with somebody else. Uh, and that's actually what gears, uh, basically this competition between the sexes. And that's how you get things like Corkscrew dicks and ducks. Yep. Yep. That's a thing. If you didn't know it before, now you do. The more you know. No. <laughs> uh, I've learned so much from this book that I just, <laughs> like, for instance, honeybees, specifically European honeybees, when they have their mating flights, mm-hmm. they have, the females have to have sex with more than one male. Otherwise, they run the risk of half of their population, specifically the male half, being basically infertile. So they have to have sex with multiple males in order to divert that that situation. The only problem is male honeybees don't want that because they don't want the competition. So they they have evolved exploding penises. Lovely. Right? I'm, that's not even a joke. Their penises literally explode off. Which is just so weird to me and yet so cool. <laughs> Hardcore. Yeah, and, and and then, and this is the part that gets really crazy. Idea. Corkscrew dicks. Oh, God. Anyway, no, but, like, okay, so, honeybee, honeybees, like, the whole reason why their, their dicks explode off is because... It creates this seal, which prevents the female from, you know, getting inseminated by more males. But she has to, because if she doesn't, half of her freaking hive is going to be infertile. And they're going to be useless, so they'll just end up eating them. Uh, so what females have done is they, and, and, and because they, it prevents, it creates this seal, the females have learned... Basically how to scrape off the seal so they can get with more males. <laughs> it's just like a revolving door pattern of behavior. The female did the thing, so then the male does the thing. And it's mostly the females that start it. Because at some point in the species sexual or evolution history, the females decided or figured out, if I, do, if I sleep with more than one male, I have better chances of my children sur- of more, of having a more children or my children surviving better mm-hmm. and even in species that you think are monogamous they'll still mostly try for that behavior unless uh you run the risk of for instance a male not uh, participating and helping to raise the offspring that's the, like 
males are much more likely to help raise the offspring if it thinks if, if they think it's theirs. So females will pretend that they've been chased when really no. <laughs> And this is what leads to some of the, and this is what leads to most of the behaviors that we think are weird or strange in animals. Like, for instance, a lot of the strange behaviors that we see in things like, for instance, the cuttlefish. The cuttlefish are so weird, just A, as a species in general, but then also in their breeding practices, because a lot of species of cuttlefish uh have like this split between the males. They have these really small, cunning males who pretend to be females and will sleep with the other bigger males, <laughs> but also are really just there in order to A, masquerade themselves as females and get with the females, and B, like, uh, yeah, no, actually that's the main reason, is, is to masquerade as females so they can get with the females. And they just slip by the bigger males. And the whole reason why this behavior adapted is because the females wanted both big, strong babies and also very intelligent babies. And this is how they get both. <laughs> the females actually encourage this behavior. Because if they didn't, they wouldn't sleep with the masquerading... They wouldn't, you know, get busy with the masquerading males. They wouldn't sure. expect accept them as, as, uh, as mates. But they do. And they do it specifically to encourage more of this behavior. And that's how it got started in the first place. I know a man's knob is shaped to pull. Oh. Well, yeah, kind of. Yeah. And that's because, yeah. We're, okay, so take, for instance, species that don't have a lot of sexual competition. Like, for instance, gorillas. Gorillas have really tiny dicks. <laughs> because there's not a lot of sexual competition. So... There's not a whole lot of motivation, genetically speaking, for things to change down there. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, basically, the the more competition there is, the crazier things get. You know, genetically speaking. <laughs> this is a fun conversation. Red's enjoying it. Are you enjoying it? I'm sorry, this is getting too weird. No, it's fine. It's yeah. fine. I'll deal. <laughs> Okay, what else can I talk about that I, I'm weirdly obsessed with? Oh, oh, okay. I'm also, I also really love studying serial killers, which is That's weird. a weird segue. Like, the weirdest segue, right? Well, because like the two main books that I'm reading right now are The Psychopath Inside by James Fallon. <laughs> not Jimmy Fallon. Not to be confused with Jimmy Fallon. Yes, actually, that is why horses are hung like that. Uh, anyway... <laughs> Um, and, uh, uh, and then the other one is this, this book on sexual evolution that I've been reading. No, but, so these are the two main books I've been reading, so, like, it's basically the, it, it's both the, what the hell? Okay, that was weird. My, uh, tablet started to freak out there for a second. No, but, um, so you, you get... The, both the psychology and the brain chemistry of what makes up psychopaths. Because apparently, all psychopaths have, like, the same sort of, like, brain chemistry. When they do scans of the brain, they all come out pretty much the same. And so there's this actual pattern that you can, um, that you can get when you look at a psychopath's brain. Which is weird and cool at the same time. And people who lack empathy have the same brain pattern. Which is why I'm convinced that if you took a brain scan of my mom's friend Kathy, it would look like a psychopath's brain scan. <laughs> Kathy, uh, Kathy is almost... Because, okay, here's the thing. Teachers have to take a test that measures their empathy levels. Because if you're not very empathetic, you can't be a teacher. Like, if you fail the empathy test, you, you can't be a teacher. I think this is just I, for California. Yeah, Buddhistic, it's empathy, not apathy. Yeah, empathy. <laughs> uh, but, um... Wrong pathy. Wrong pathy. Uh, no, but, like, so, uh, basically, Kathy has almost failed it, like, three times. Oh, shit. Yeah, she's got, like, super low scores. And you're just like, huh... Okay. Right. <laughs> My mom passes somehow, but Kathy, Kathy's like, 
very on the verge of not passing. And you're like, hmm, this makes sense. <laughs> uh, no, but like, apparently so, like, but here's the thing is the whole... Okay, guys, uh, hopefully we are back. I'm... Stupid technology. Yeah, I'm hoping that we're back now. <laughs> this uh. is why I hate machines. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I'm gonna go about, like, we're back. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what happened. I really don't. Um... Oh. Is being a pain in the butt I'm, I'm hoping that Rob gets back soon and helps me figure out what the problem is. I checked, though, and apparently we were streaming through a server in China? Which is weird. Yeah, and I'm like, that shouldn't That be, shouldn't be a thing. That shouldn't be what was happening. We live in California. We should be streaming from California server what's happening. So, I, I changed it. Hopefully that was what was causing the problem? I don't know. Uh, we will find out. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what is causing the problem. I'm, I'm just hopeful it doesn't continue. Uh. God damn it, Austin! Yes. Ah! Michaela. What? <laughs> Seriously? Austin? It's all Austin's fault. Uh-huh. In the butt. Uh huh. Mikkel is playing some game that involves some guy named Austin. I don't know much more about it other than that it, it requires. It's a game called Gardenscapes yeah. and Homescapes. Yeah. And he always gives me crap pieces to play <laughs> so that I don't win. <laughs> oh, Lord. Usually, when I do win, especially if I've been stuck on the level for like the last couple of days, yeah. like now, I will usually say, Yeah, I win. Fuck you, Austin. <laughs> Because it's always Austin's fault. Yeah. Never mind. Alright, so... I don't make bad moves. It's all Austin. <laughs> Sweetheart, I don't think you blame Austin for all of your problems. Yes, I do. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, what were you talking about before the stream crashed? Psychopaths? Yeah, I think yeah. so. And my weird obsession with them? Right, okay, so anyway. Um... Yeah, so James Fallon was, like, looking at these brain scans, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, and, what the fuck? No demons in the <laughs> kitchen who cannot come out to play. What the hell? Demons in the kitchen, go away. Anyway. Uh, what was this? <laughs> Psychopaths. Right. No, so, like, uh, so he managed to figure out that, like, it's not just your genetics, although that does predispose you to psychopathy, because he looked into it, and apparently he was related to a lot of psychopaths. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Ain't that fun knowledge. Right? And, and you can have all the har hallmarks for psychopathy, but so long as you don't also, uh, like, have the psychology that leads to it, you should... Be relatively normal? <laughs> relatively normal. That yeah. sounds like a good thing. Yeah, and he, like, discovered this, like, warrior gene that was actually responsible for most of the psychopathic hallmarks. Which is weird. But cool. Which means both biceps is not a psychopath, people. Nope. He just really, really likes working out. Oh, are we talking about the pony? Yeah. That's what I was talking about. Oh lord. <laughs> uh, this is my life bigger in this house. Ponies. <laughs> Ponies! Oh, and Star versus the Forces of Evil, which we have been watching a lot of lately. I, don't blame me for that. No, 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 that was my fault. I wanted to catch up and then I was like, wait, I should get I should get McKella addicted to this show. And then I did. And lo and behold. Here we are today. <laughs> and yay, so it has been written. So it shall be done. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got her. It's my life now. Yep, I got her addicted to Star vs. the Forces of Evil, and I feel no shame. Nope, none 
None whatsoever. Yep, I love Princess Marco. One of these days I'm gonna draw Princess Marco. Princess Marco, by the way, being Star's male best friend. In a dress. Princess Marco Turdina. Yep. Yes. Yep. God, I love it. I love, I love this show so much. It's so great. It's like everything I ever wanted out of a princess show when I was growing up. Specifically stars, everything I wanted to be as a princess when I was younger. Oh, princess red. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I also played the prince quite a bit, which probably should have keyed me into the fact that I wasn't totally female from a very <laughs> early age. Like, that might have given you a clue. Right? That might actually have been kind of a clue. I also played the villain, though, so I don't really think... Yeah, villains! Woo! Well, because, like, it was only three of us, and the other two refused to be anything other than the princesses. They refused to be the villains, like, ever. So I had to play three frickin' roles. Lovely. Yeah, I was the prince, and I was also the warrior princess... And then I was also the villain. So I had to fight myself. That was fun. <laughs> I do like these epic back and forth monologues. <laughs> we, we were like very into Sailor Moon and Xena when I was a kid. I remember Xena. I never really watched it because I don't think it was... my. It, it, I don't think it captured my interest that much. Yeah. I liked it. I liked it a lot. So I was like, woo, yeah, warrior princess, yeah, right on, woo! But then I was like, do you really want to, do you want to go watch it? No, Dinosaurs is playing right now. Dinosaurs! <laughs> Which... I'm gonna go watch that. Oh no, DBC is on right now. I have to watch that first. <laughs> uh, was the dragon deck I'm worried about? Yeah. Uh, Mikella, Mikella here is the one with the dragon deck. <laughs> it is beautiful. Yeah, and that I lash you, it. yeah, that lash you key you into just about like how dangerous it is because I played it once and I was like, this is nothing, this is easy, and then I was like, oh no, now it's hard, <laughs> and then I died like right five around. Five colors. Yep, it's beautiful. It's a five color dragon commander deck. It used to be standard. I'm glad it's not standard anymore. It was very scary as a standard deck. <laughs> I was very scared. That's okay. <laughs> well, because, like, it started off like, oh, this is fine, I'm doing fine, and then all of a sudden there was a billion dragons, and I was like, well, no, I'm not fine anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm suddenly very not fine. <laughs> Things have gone severely downhill. Ooh, zombies. That's my thing. Zombies are my thing. Indeed. Zombies and mummies. I like mummies. <laughs> I just like the mummies. I do. I really yeah. do. Uh, Are you getting mad at Austin again? Yeah. Yeah. This is Homescape stuff. Yeah. Different. Okay. But still Austin. But still Austin. Fuck <laughs> <Thank> you, Austin. <laughs> oh God. I will admit, sometimes I just say fuck you, Austin, just to hear you laugh about it. <laughs> well, it's funny to me, because I like I have no idea what the game is about. I just hear fuck you, Austin, so it's amusing to me. Because you don't swear that often. I don't. Whereas I swear all the fucking time. As evidenced by the fact that I just said all the fucking time instead of all the time. I do try to curb myself with my cursing. Yeah. Sometimes situations, being what they are, <laughs> don't lend to that very well. Well, I mean, you spend, you and Rob spend more time around kids than I do. That is true. Whereas I spend like zero time around children. I I did I did I was at a school for uh, Doctor Seuss Day to read Doctor Seuss to some kids, and that went pretty good. I mean, I was also there to talk about my job. Because my mom likes to be a blabbermouth and told some teachers near us, and so I had to go and fucking talk about. The job that you can't talk about? Yes! <laughs> I had to go talk about being a ghostwriter and stuff. Specifically for the company I'm really not allowed to talk about at all because their non-disclosure agreement is basically the worst. Do you want to live? 
Like, yes, then keep your damn mouth shut. Basically. <laughs> it's basically the contract. It's like, look, don't talk about us ever and you'll be fine. And I'm like, uh... Has already told my entire family. Okay. I'll try. <laughs> uh... Because I'm, I'm contracted with four companies right now. It used to be five, but then I got fired. From one of them. Uh, it was a video game company. I can't say who. And yes... Did I say that loud enough? Yes, you did. Sorry. Uh, but I... And yes, I do play EA. I do. Fuck you, EA. EA is the literal fucking devil of video games. Why do people trust them with anything? I don't know. Like, every time someone's like, it's not EA's fault, or EA's not that bad, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? EA's the literal actual fucking devil. They sabotage their own fucking games so that they can continue to sell FIFA, which is just re rehashed bullshit. I'm sorry to people who enjoy FIFA. Like, that's just how I feel. It's not, like, it's, first it's of all- It's not FIFA's fault. Yeah. I know it's not FIFA's fault, but at the other, on the other hand, it's like, this is a company that makes its money off of freaking video games that the people featured in don't see, like, a fucking, pe uh, like, a fucking penny for. Like, there's this South Park episode called Crack Baby, or Crack Baby Basketball or something like that, and it is very good at depicting not only a the state of college sports where college athletes don't get paid anything and the colleges make a crap ton of money off of their student athletes and and also off of EA's notorious habit of being we're going to feature the people in that the real life people that you that you are in this game and you're going to see zero money from it no blooming sense. Yeah. Uh, and they can get away with it. Uh, specifically every time they do it for, for college students. Or college athletes, in particular. Uh, and EA is doing that a lot. And that's why I'm like, they're the literal, actual fucking video game devil. Why do we keep giving them money? <laughs> like, I, and that's why I'm like, no. Because every time they're like, oh, they wouldn't sabotage their own games. That wouldn't make sense. It's like, from their standpoint, it does, because they're always making enough money off of video games that basically have to do very little innovation for, mm -hmm. and have to pay very little amounts for in order to produce. And they make so much money off of it that it that they can basically afford to sabotage other games if they think they can like squeeze a little bit more money out of it. Which is what happened with Mass Effect Andromeda! <laughs> They killed my favorite video game series. I'm really pissed. <laughs> like, okay, EA used to be good. Used to be. Way back when. And then they axed their cleverness division. And, like, all of their create creative divisions. So then, you know. And then they became the actual man manifest devil of the video game industry. And I hate them. I hate them so much. <laughs> Aw, oh, thank you! It changes. It changes a lot. There's a different laugh for, like, every little thing. Yeah, there's the evil laugh, there's mm. the happy laugh, there's the this is so stupid laugh, but yeah. I'm laughing anyway laugh. Yep. Um, there's the I'm mad, but I'm laughing laugh. <laughs> yeah. Which happens a lot if Robert's around. Because, <laughs> God damn it, Robert! <laughs> Like, it's just the fucking puns he makes. They just don't make any sense. And yet, I'm still fucking laughing over them. You know what it is? It's like, I'm way too easily freaking amused. Like, if- okay. So... If the Lost Light were real, and if I managed to wind up on it, I would spend all of my time in swerves because I would be, A, it's a bar, where everyone goes anyway. And B, Swerve is freaking funny. <laughs> so I'd probably be laughing at like everything he says like an idiot. Because, 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm just way too easily amused. Hang on, I'm You're gonna typing an email to I'm gonna my job. Check something. I'm oh, trying to make red blush. You're trying to make red blush. Oh no, no, no! Don't don't give hints. Don't give hints. Why why would you do that? Okay, let's see. Is Buddha Lestic the, the, the person who's coming to visit yeah, us the, tomorrow? Yes. Okay. I'll tell you then, then. Buddha Lestic, how's that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, it says, let's see. 5.8%. CPU 36.7. Alright, so it seems to be doing okay. Alright. I'm gonna go back. Alright. Wait, what's my background right now? Ah! Oh, it's a little tiny Rodimus! Little, little itty bitty Rodimus, because those are fingers. Holding up his leg. He's itty bitty. <laughs> I mean, if you really, really want them to figure out the best way to make me blush. I was, that was a little while ago. I was I was oh, checking okay. I was checking our our stream stats. Oh, making sure it was still running. Yes. Stupid technology. This is why I hate machines. Transformers <laughs> <laughs> uh, animated. It's hilarious. Uh oh, cause see, oh no, there it goes. Yeah, there it goes. God damn it! Curse you! Technology. Fuck. Why did it do that? How long did it last this time? 15 minutes? It's like it's less and less each and every single friggin' time. Everybody. Welcome back to Red Puts Art Interface. I am so sorry for the problems we were having. Apparently I needed to update OBS because I hadn't done that in a year. So yeah. It's been updated now though. So there we, there we go. Um, Alright, so we're going to pick up where we left off and hopefully things won't crash on us this time. I've already yeah. told all the Discordians. Good, Discord's been informed. That's it was the longest ten that's minutes. Good. It was a half hour. <laughs> oh my god, it was. Oops. The um, longest of ten minutes. Yeah, we had to wait. Robert had to make a call. Uh, but Robert's here now, so hey, look, there's three of us for the stream now. Yay! I survived two fires today. Yeah, he did. I was I was gonna ask. What so, happened? <laughs> Alright, so the first more minor fire. Yeah. Uh -huh. Was actually on campus. Okay. We have the food room, which was the home ec room, but then they canceled home ec. Of course. Uh, they also canceled normal ec, and they figured some of the kids don't have homes. They canceled home. Um, only that <laughs> only one of those was a joke. Uh. Though we do have a surprisingly large number of homeless students, it's actually very distressing. Yeah. Um. Yay, Title I districts. Um, oh, God. So, I guess ASB was in the food room, and, like, their teacher took them in there for some reason. Yeah. Right? And somebody went, oh, I'm going to, uh... What? Ah! No, it's Manga Studio! Manga Studio? <laughs> Don't, Don't fucking fuck with start us. with us. We will end you. <laughs> We can replace you. I had so many problems today. <laughs> technology, technology is being a bitch. Technology, why? We so, are technology's bitch today. Oh dear. We'll try our best. The good news. If this doesn't work, I'll just go do a stream of another of a game or something. Alright. Anyway. Um, the good news is I wasn't that far behind. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know what they were making, but somebody decided, I need to toast something. But we don't have a toaster. Or a toaster oven. 
But an oven is like a big toaster oven. Oh, no. Oh, good lord. So they turn on the entire oven to toast. I'm going to assume it's one of the Hot Pockets the ASB teacher sells. It's like, just use the fucking microwave to your left. <laughs> well, the problem with an oven is it's huge. It big. Yep. And Hot Pocket small. Yep. And because of this, the Hot Pocket caught fire. Yeah, that seems about right. And, um... They didn't put a tray under the Hot Pocket. Oh, no. So when the Hot Pocket exploded, <laughs> pepperoni, I don't know if it was the ham and cheese or the pepperoni guy. I'm going to assume it's pepperoni. Okay. It Pepperoni's delicious. dripped everywhere into the heating elements, which in a toaster oven creates a minor amount of smoke in a full oven. <laughs> Lots of smoke. Fire, it did apparently. not create a fire, thankfully. Yeah. Oh, it just okay. created enough smoke it set off all the fire alarms. And then when they were about to call false alarm, that's when the uh, principal secretary went, you know, it's been about two months since we had a fire drill. Let's take advantage of this. Oh, so then we got a fire drill out of a minor fire. Uh, then we go to PE. And our kids were so rambunctious during the fire drill that we told them, you guys are going to be doing line drills. Teach y'all how to walk in a straight damn line. And we get to do one, and then we find out, oh, that for some reason... There's a guy who needs to use a tractor on the baseball field again. I don't know what they do with this tractor. I think they just drive it so they look busy. Okay. It's clearly not the lawnmower or the tiller. It's just like... It's like a bulldozer? No. No, not a bulldozer. The one with the scoop. Not the backhoe scoop. The little front scoop. I don't know why you're asking me these questions. Like, I'm going to know the answer. The one that's like, scoop. From Transformers. That one. The one that I'm pretty sure is a Transformer. <laughs> um, anyway. So, we decide, you know what? Instead, let's go to the track. We'll have you guys walk in a line around the track, and I will be pulling out people who I see doing it right. If I don't see you doing it right, then you keep going for another lap. So some of these kids did like three quarters of a mile marching in a straight line. Because they idiots? Well, because they can't stand a fucking straight line. And they're like all horny 11-year-olds, and a couple of them are like, oh, but we're dating now. No, and you're like, 11. Stop you're 11, that. and knock that off. Anyway, uh, so then we look out to the horizon. By the horizon, I mean we look south. Towards the park, which we wistfully look at, wishing, oh my god, I wish this day was over. <laughs> and then I see a little poof. Oh, no. Of white smoke coming oh, no. from about three blocks away. Oh, no. And that poof became a column. Oh, no. And that white smoke became black. Oh, no. And we were all guessing, like, is it the jack-in-the-box that's on fire? <laughs> is it the hardware store? <laughs> is it the grocery store? It's not the Stater Brothers. And it's too far to be the Albertsons. Shut up! So... <laughs> We'll explain the State of Brothers Albertson situation in a moment. No! <laughs> what? Hey, hey, hey. If we I have... was exhausted. Hey, hey. I get Swooties, you get Albertsons. That's how this works. Yeah. For those of you not from California, Albertsons and State of Brothers are two local grocery store chains. Yes. Uh, Albertsons is similar to a Smith's. Uh, meanwhile, Stater's is kind of like a Kroger's, but... Ross more, Ross? more local. Anyway, like not, not local. I guess smaller scale. Okay. Or a club store. Anyway, um, so we are looking at this giant pillar of black smoke, and then the wind changed direction. Oh no! Towards us. Well, that's not it, good. It, any of you, die. any of you who have ever played Mass Effect Andromeda, <laughs> when you turn off those big monolithy things. <laughs> I think are called black stands. That's not correct. They're called monoliths. Yep. Um, there's like this giant death fart that comes at you. <laughs> and that's what it looked like coming towards us. And my concern... Death fart? Was like, we have three students with asthma, one of which it is deadly asthma. And I have asthma. And I don't want me or Destiny dying. Which okay. I shouldn't have used her real name. She's a sweet girl. I'm not saying her last name. Okay. She's good. She's one of my good students. I have no bad stories about her. My one bad story about her is she dyed her hair once and I didn't know who she was for like three minutes. 
And she, her mom lets her dye her hair every color of the freaking rainbow. Yay! So you don't know what she's going to show up to school at. Mm. Right now, she looks like a Sylveon. <clears throat> she's all light pink and white and baby blue. She is made of cotton candy. <laughs> that sounds adorable. She, she is. She's one of my good... Like, whenever I have to make a good call to calm myself down after all the bad calls... Yeah. Like, one out of three chances it's her. I don't... I, I think the worst day I've had out of her... Is she she got a little sad Aww. about something and that was it. That's the end of the story. <laughs> like most of my stories with Destiny are her being silly, but not disruptive. Oh, that's good. She's she's a good kid. And I'm hoping she does well. She does not deserve to be with the rest of her fucking classmates. Like I take out her, I would take out most of the kids who played magic. I would take out like two or three more. It's like ten good kids who do not deserve to be with that group. Those kids deserve to be at, like, a freaking private school. Maybe the kind where they learn from a bald man how to use their powers. Anyway. Uh, right, those schools tend to blow up, not those. Anyway, we'll send the other kids to that school. Because that school blows up. Anyway. Um, oh, God. <laughs> so, on another note. When it comes to grocery stores, here in the middle of the Mojave Wasteland, you have a couple options. We have a Dollar General that's in town, which is, it's all right. Yeah. They have good pickles. They have, they have most of the brands you want, but they don't have the great selection. Like, if you want good beer, don't, don't go there. Yeah. They, they have Stella's, which are good, but man cannot live on Stella alone. And mm. they have... Stella! It's still the funniest fucking joke from BoJack. It's a Marlin named Brando giving out beer orders. And when it's the Stella's, he yells, it's like, Stella! Stella! And here's your chorus. God damn it. <laughs> at, at a uh, restaurant that's named, I can't remember the pun, but it was a pun on a streetcar named Desire. God damn they it! They went all in on that joke, and I loved it. I love anyway. going all in on jokes. <laughs> they, they completely anteed up. It's like the Weekenders, how every week the pizza place changed owners. Oh my god, that's right! That was the best. And they didn't just do it like The Simpsons with the different chalkboard or Bob's Burgers with the guys next door, which really vacant during the episode. Yeah. In The Weekenders, it was always 100%. They're, they show you the interior. They changed everything. Well, that's not true. It's not always vacant during the episode. Like, there was the episode... There, where... Yeah, there's a couple times it's not. Yeah. But, like, most of the time it's vacant. You get the bit in the beginning and then you don't see that business. True. All right. Anyway, so if you go if you go down to the next town where I work, there's Stater Brothers, which is nice. I like Stater Brothers. And then if you go 15 miles down the road, you get to Albertsons, which we have been to like four times because it's kind of way out of the way. But one of those times was right before Christmas, and we're driving back, and it's super late, and Michaela's loopy as hell because she's tired. She's had a full day at this point. I was exhausted. And then we stop. We go into Albertsons. We get some Tupperwares and some fudge ingredients. Because we was making fudge. And then we drive the rest of the way home. Well... This wasn't over the holidays. Was, I was living no, here no, no, when no, this no, no, happened. No, I'm explaining where she got the misconception. Oh, okay. Okay. Apparently, between Albertsons and Stater Brothers, McKella fell asleep in the car, which is a rarity, and woke up near Stater Brothers. But she never sleeps in the car. So this was an alien experience to her. So she assumed they were, like, across the street from each other. Because earlier she had looked to her left, and there's an Albertsons, and now she's looking to her right, and there's a Stater Brothers. She thought, man, that's weird that they're next to each other. <laughs> so then, like, a couple months later... Yeah. I, I, I think it was the two of you went grocery shopping, and she remarked that the Albertsons was gone. No. Is that not it? No. 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 You were in the car with her. I was Because I was not there. You called me to tell me about it. Okay. So, I don't remember exactly what we were doing, but, like, we go to Stater Brothers, and then when they didn't have something, Michaela asked, why don't we just go to Albertsons? I thought, that's... So I'm not driving another 15 miles for something for one thing. No, it's across the street. No, it's not. <laughs> There's a gas station across the street in a Motel 6. She did not believe me. Hi, Firebeard! Hi, Firebeard! So, I had, to, I had to show her 
that the Albertsons is really fucking far away. <laughs> like, really far. It's, it's halfway to the, uh, it's halfway to the, uh, game store. And I think part, where part of the confusion comes in. Yeah. Is that both the Stater brothers and the Albertsons have a Jack in the Box near them. Yeah. Which is normally where we stop. But here's where I get more confused. Mm-hmm. Because these Jack in the Boxes are in no way the same. Because one of them is a normal Jack in the Box, and that's the one near the Stater Brothers. Okay. The other one's a gas station that happens to have a Jack in the Box drive through That's weird. And she somehow thought these were the same Jack in the Box. I was tired! We had stopped to get gas at the other one multiple times. With her in the car. But she was playing Gardenscapes. She was too angry at Austin. <laughs> so she couldn't tell. Stupid Austin. <laughs> so she just. I'm, I'm going under the assumption here that she just assumed that the Chevron was next to the Jack in the Box. And not a separate place. And then there's the Taco Bell. Which I don't know how she ever came to the conclusion that they're near each other when she knows the nearest Taco Bell is a half hour drive from here. But it's next to the Albertsons. And the Staters is ten minutes away. I don't know what road she thought I had to take to get to that Albertsons. There's a lot of evidence that these were nowhere near each other, honey. I love how mad she's getting about this when I... five freeway exits. I love how mad she's getting about this when I I still get guff for that sweaty mistake. I mean, it's an inside joke that's literally written into our Teespring Oh, no, I've been, I took that out ages ago. Aww. I just like teasing you about it. Aww. I can put it back. Please do. All right. <laughs> it's, why, why not? Why not make my shame eternal? And that was just one slip of the tongue once in a random stream. It was not a random stream. Oh. It was Christmas Effect. Oh, yeah. Episode, I want to say four is when we got Liara. Yeah. And it was during us getting Liara. Yeah. And it's weird that that is one of the episodes I can remember vividly. Yeah. With our weird Santa Shepherd. <laughs> oh, yeah, Santa Shepherd! We have two separate Mass Effect playthroughs yeah. that neither finished. Because one was us just doing 12 Christmas-themed episodes that the theme falls apart by the time we get to the, um... Uh, Pharos? Yeah, what's the thing on that thing called? You mean the, uh... The, the plant thing. Yeah. That makes green alien chicks. Uh... And fight in another game. Uh... Oh, no! God damn it. Alright, let's go switch streams. God. Damn it. How am I supposed to earn right rent if I can't do an art stream? By doing commissions and using the money from that? I, I, I don't get enough commission requests. Red. Deep breath. Come here. Calm down. Deep breath. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Then why would I kick you out? Okay. No, I just... I know you want to feel useful. You are useful. Okay? You need a hug. Okay. Here's what I think we're going to try. But not right this moment because we're stressed out about it. Okay? We're going to put in the Streamlabs version of OBS. And we're going to get you familiar with it. Okay? And we're going to see if that helps because that typically has a more stable connection. Okay. My other thought is I'm going to check the OBS board. Can you pull up OBS so we can see what the error log says? It doesn't have an error log. It says we're still streaming. 